Okay, hey guys, what is going on? We're in module eight right now, and we get to talk about something which I think is super cool. We're gonna talk about inductance and inductors. And inductance and the component, the inductor, is awesome because we start to get into some interesting phenomenon that we don't associate with the first part of this class when we're talking about electricity, but now we're getting into really cool things. We're gonna start talking about this, uh, this awesome relationship between electromagnetism and electromotive force and then some of the components that manipulate electricity. So I'm actually so jazzed about this that I'm going to separate this section out of respect for your time and your brain's not going I'm going to separate this into two parts. The first part, we're going to talk about the definition of what inductance is and then what the component, the inductor, does. And then we're going to finish it off with a really quick lab experiment on the virtual Falstead lab. And then we're going to come back again and let your brain cells settle a little bit and talk about some of the implications and why we use inductors in electronics and our projects. So let's kick it off. Okay, first, we got to do our um, homage to the theory and talk about the definition. What is inductance? Inductance is the tendency of an electrical conductor to oppose a change in the electrical current flowing through it. It means absolutely nothing to you. I totally get that. I'm going to start unpacking this definition by talking about the component, the inductor, and I think it's going to make a little bit more sense. And by the time we get to part two of this, you're totally going to get it. I know it. Um, the term inductance was coined by Oliver Heaviside. Heaviside? I don't want to call him the wrong name, but Heaviside is like, looks like it's how it's been spelt. And of all the physicists and great contributors to the field of electronics, he's one of the few that I don't know. I'm, I'm much better with the Russian and German names for some reason. Um, we use the symbol L. It's usually capital L and italicized to donate to denote inductance in, in equations. The L symbol is used in honor of Russian physicist Heinrich Friedrich Emil Lenz. And um, like I said before, we're going to better understand the phenomena of inductance by talking about the component in which lends us the term. So what is an inductor? Super simple, guys. An inductor is a coil of wire wrapped around a magnetic material. That's it. Um, sometimes you don't even need a magnetic material. Air core inductors are a perfect example, and we'll talk about that a little later in the module, um, but it's also known as a solenoid, right? So what's happening is when you push electrons or a charge through a coil of wire, well, through any wire, a magnetic field is generated. There's this amazing relationship, this tangential dance between electricity and magnetism. And when you have electricity going through a wire, you get these arcs of magnetic fields that appear. But when you start to coil a wire, then the magnetic fields kind of merge and grow and evolve into much more robust representations of magnetism. And that's what you see in a solenoid or an inductor. You can see here in the bottom left, in this green box, we've got a new symbol, and that is the inductor. It looks like an extra stretched out long McDonald's symbol, but flipped on its side. And when we're talking about the concept of inductance, we unitize it in the in a Henry. Um, it's named after Joseph Henry, um, an American physicist who actually simultaneously discovered the phenomenon along with several other individuals, but he was the one who won the day and got the uh, the unit named after him. Um, so the Henry is the amount of inductance that causes a voltage of one volt uh, when current is changing at a rate of one ampere per second. And we're going to start to see here soon this concept of changing um, the the delta right it's the the amount of change that's happening through circuitry is how we're measuring inductance i know it doesn't make sense so as we talk about the way an inductor works it will i promise let's kick it off okay so first we need to take a quick segue and talk about magnetic fields so i told you before when electricity is moving through a wire 
it generates it's got this uh, this great dance that we have with magnetism and it generates a magnetic field that magnetic field oscillates um, almost like it's orbiting around the wire itself contrary or contrarily uh, magnetic fields are generated with energy movement right so energy moving through a wire creates a magnetic field um, magnetic fields also are containers are vessels for energy as they collapse the the energy in those fields is dispersing and as more energy is getting pushed into these fields they become larger and more robust so when we have a solenoid and we start to circle these wires around especially around a conductive material we can get much larger magnetic fields which means bigger vessels for more energy um, the when they're the wires are coiled then they merge the uh, the fields merge and they grow and they're more intense and they also produce um, I don't know if you remember from previous chapters electromotive force and we're going to talk about that a little bit more and you can actually see these fields if you have metal shavings and um, maybe a piece of paper over a magnet or over a solenoid. You can actually see how the fields move from pole to pole and they create this basically this this energy matrix that starts to form around um, the solenoid. And that's what you can see in the bottom corner there. So let's talk more about this inductor. I like to call inductors stubborn components in electronics because inductors are constantly trying to prevent current that's running through them from changing. Whether it be raising or lowering, the inductors want to stick, keep the current consistent. They want to make them constant, um, sometimes denoted in equations with the letter K. They want the delta triangle the change of current to be as little as possible if the current is consistent inductors are happy they're content if the current is changing then they push back against the current change with great force and that force is the electromotive force okay so this is what happens if we have a circuit like we see and there's a charged particle moving through the circuit and crossing against the inductor. The inductor is then moving to push back against the current because the current is taking is sitting zero flat. There's no current going through the inductor. And then it's attempting to rise across the inductor. Well, as these fields, these magnetic fields grow, they're using that energy to push back because they don't want any change. Remember, they're very stubborn. So if you were to look at this on an amp, uh, an amp meter, it looks as if the current is slowly rising. And what's happening is you're seeing the opposition, the struggle between conductors trying to maintain a constant of current, whatever that constant may be. In the case of an unenergized circuit, zero. So we're trying to keep it as little change as possible. And that electromotive force is pushing back against the charge particles that are going through it. So like I said, the force exerted back upon the current is the EMF within the inductor. And then eventually, the current rises and rises slowly enough where it becomes constant. It's not growing anymore, and the inductor is happy. When an inductor has a constant current with no, little to no change, it actually acts as if a wire, the resistance going through it, is minimal. It's nullified. So it's kind of like the inductor has, I say, like inertia. Um, and once that inertia is overcome, there's no more resistance. And then the current can go through the circuit without a problem. Um, and that's what I'm saying here. Uh, when the current that's passing through the inductor is constant, uh, the inductor won't exert any external force, no EMF, and it performs just like a regular straight piece of wire. Real simple. Okay, so I love analogies for these components, and I love using water analogies with electricity. 
terrible mix when put together, great mix when you're talking about how to define and describe these phenomena. So I always think of inductors as big, heavy water wheels. If a river is pushing against a water wheel and it's a big, heavy guy, it's resisting and like the water is like backing up against the water wheel. It's, it's not going. It's, it's like it's pushing back with all the weight of the wheel itself. But after some time and the river's consistently pushing, the wheel slowly and begrudgingly begins to spin and then it spins and then it spins faster and faster until it's going with the pace of the water. Once it's overcome by the water and it's moving at the pace, the wheel actually offers no res little to no resistance and it just is kind of going with the flow. Uh -huh, no pun intended. Um, <laughs> it's late guys, I'm sorry. But um, even though it takes a long time to get the wheel going, once it ha it starts going, it's got inertia, it's got movement, it's going with the flow of the water. Let's say we were to stop the river, we dammed it up instantly. The, w the big heavy water wheel isn't just going to stop instantly, it's going to slowly go from going whatever speed it is until it slowly, slowly slowly stops it has this inertia and it keeps it going the water wheel with its heavy weight is actually resisting change it was resisting change when the water was rushing at it to actually start moving and then once it got start it got moving if we were to try and stop the water it would resist the change of the movement to actually become in a position of rest or a status of rest rest so perfect analogy um in fact, to go with that analogy, let's pop over to the tablet and I can kind of draw a circuit and see how it's relevant. All right, guys, so let's take a look at this circuit and see what we got. Uh, we'll walk around the circuit together. We've got, we'll just say a DC circuit, although inductors are typically found in AC circuits, not a big deal. I shouldn't say that. They're found equally on both sides. Um, so we've got our power source here. We've got a switch here and a parallel circuit with the resistor. Resistance doesn't matter. We're just talking about the concept. And then we have in our, our inductor right there. And then we've got a little lamp for load right here. So we can see the action at work. So let's take a look. We're going to energize our circuit. And oh, also really important to note, we have a switch right here. And that's going to be important to talk about some of the concepts. So we energize our circuit and we've got our charged particles moving. We're going to go with, uh, you know, practical flow, positive terminal to the negative terminal. And we have our first branch in our parallel circuit. There's a resistor and we know electricity likes to go the path of least resistance and thus a resistor is there so it could go here and then it could go through this inductor path but what's happening is we know that our inductors are extremely stubborn and any force that they're met with they will return in kind so we have an electromotive force that's pushing back against the current flow going down our second branch. We'll call this branch B and branch A. Um, but really what's happening is the inductor is slowly giving way. It's the electromotive force is pushing against the current, but those magnetic fields are slowly charging. Meanwhile, down branch A, the current is flowing like no, no problem whatsoever. It's crossing our lamp, which is our load, and the lamp is lighting up, and the current is then returning to find some balance and go back into the negative terminal. So let me scratch this out real quick. So you see what's going on. You see the process. Our inductor, the field is growing. It's getting larger. All right, it's getting bigger. And finally, that amperage is meeting peak value. When that happens, this inductor right here, this guy, that electromotive force goes away. 
it's actually facilitating the movement of the current. It's pretty much at a constant, right? The current going through, we're going to say it's at K. And it's now acting like a regular piece of wire with zero resistance. So what happens is the current stops going this way and starts going through this inductor. And that's what's happening. Now, normally in a system like this, if we didn't have an inductor, if we flip the switch on this guy, we open the switch, then there's no more current going across the circuit through the parallel circuit. The light would instantly go out. But what's going on here is the inductor is trying to keep the consistency. It's actually forcing the current to keep going through. So it's still trying to push charge carriers. And even though, oops, wrong color. So even though the switch has been thrown, it's, so, it's now open, it is still attempting to push current through that. So for a split second, it's all happened so, so fast in the grand scheme of things. But for a moment there, this lamp is still actually getting charged. It's still getting powered by the conductor, which is attempting to keep the current. Remember, because current is the volume of electrons. It's attempting, attempting to keep the, a consistent value of fast moving electrons, even though the switch has been turned off. So there you go. That's a practical application. And we'll jump into the false set simulator to take a look at this in a little bit. And that's pretty much the same thing as that water wheel. Once it gets going, it's almost like it's got inertia. It's trying to keep, it's trying to keep it going. So let's jump back over to the PowerPoint here. And if we were to look at this with um, a multimeter and look at the voltage and the amperage, we we close the circuit on this guy, on this really simple circuit with an inductor. 10 like there's an imaginary load there. The voltage is going to jump to max voltage. Let's say this power source is 5 volts. It's going to be a square wave that jumps up max voltage immediately. But the amperage is not going to be that. It's not going to jump up to full amperage. It actually has to overcome the electromotive force. It has to win over that big heavy wheel. And so the voltage is represented in a square wave, right? Boom, straight up to max voltage and that it's consistent. Well, the amperage is slowly rising, and it's using a term we call ramping up. The amperage is slowly ramping up, and it's overcoming the inertia of that big wheel. So let's talk about some cool theoretical properties of an inductor. First, I think this is just the coolest thing, and you gotta wrap your head around it. When you first hear it, it's not gonna make sense, but in a theoretical circuit with zero resistance, if we could create that, an inductor would circulate current indefinitely, like forever. The If there was no, I put, a very small amount of resistance here, but let's say we charged up this inductor and it's going, it would slowly push against this. It wouldn't go very much. It would go, go around the big side, big side, but slowly this inductor starts building up, building up, building up, and it starts to act as if there's no resistance. And then the, we'll say this resistor doesn't exist. And the, the charge carriers are going around both branches like nobody's business. And then we suddenly open the switch. The inductor would keep pushing the charge carriers because it's so resistant to the stoppage. It's so resistant to anything other than a consistent movement of, um, of electricity, of current, that it would let it happen forever. So if we had like, and wires inherently have resistance. So if it was like, um, like zero degrees Kelvin, perfect scenario with no resistance indefinitely. The inductor would keep pushing around current through the circuit. That's mind blowing to think about that this component would allow, not only allow, facilitate, push, exert force forever if there was no resistance. That's cool. In a typical uh, circuit, resistance increases and also the current decay increases, right? 
you know, like resistance against the movement of current, and therefore the current slowly drops off. But with an inductor, when inductance increases, current decay decreases. It's facilitating the movement of current, and it's once it gets to the point where it's happy, it's content with the, the constant flow of electrons, it tries its best to keep it there. It actively works. Those magnetic fields and that EMF is actively working to keep the current moving. I think that's cool. Um, also, you should know another reason that we use inductors is because they keep current from changing instantaneously. Current has to ramp up to overcome that heavy water wheel, and it also has to ramp down as the electromagnetic fields slowly collapse in the grand scheme of things, in terms of electronics, are collapsing slowly. So this is keeping the current flow from being an instantaneous change, from having that square wave straight up or straight down. It's always going to ramp up or ramp down depending on the amount of inductance. And also something to note, it takes far more force, far more force to raise the current in a circuit with an inductor in it um, than it does without an inductor because it has to overcome that EMF. But once the current is consistent, the inductor doesn't generate any forces. When it gets to a happy place, it's got a zen constant flow of current, it acts like a regular wire, and that's wild. Um, it will actually push to keep the current flowing, like we said, even if power is no longer supplied. I hope that blows your mind. It's blowing my mind right now. Okay, um, so let's draw up a cool lab in the Falstead uh, simulator and take a look at this. Some things I want you to pay attention to. I want you to watch the charge carriers as they move through the resistor and attempt to push past the inductor. Uh, we're going to turn off the current in the system and I want you to see how the inductance behaves and how it's going to try to generate a force to keep the current flowing um, at the same value that it reached when it reached its, its apex, its happy place. And also you should know that inductors are extremely powerful in the way that they're used to create immense voltages, right? They can really ramp up the current and Ohm's law, we're going to know, we see that current times resistance equals voltages. It's going to ramp up that, that amperage, that current, and then it's going to be multiplied by the resistance in the system, and that's going to equate to massive voltages. You can see that more in part two and further on in the module, but I want you to have that in the back of your mind that um, inductors are great for inducing voltage. That's one of their chief r rationales for being in circuitry. So let's jump in the lab real quick. Okay, so we're going to do this together just because I think it's always great to have uh, practice playing around in the simulator. So I'm hitting the V key to put my voltage source down. We're going to leave that blank for right now. I'm hitting the S key for a simple switch. All right, single pull, single throw. Nothing fancy about that. The L key, oh wait, shift L is going to give us our inductor. And we're going to leave that value as it is. And then the R key will give us a resistor. I think you guys should know by now, I like to throw my components down first. And then we will lay out the actual floor plan, if you will, of our circuit, and then we'll put in our values. So now I'm going to hit the W key to start making the wire connectors as necessary. We are going to make a simple parallel circuit. You can see that the electrons are starting to flow, but let's stop that real quick. I'm going to go back, W key again. And if you're following along with the PowerPoint, we know we've got to change the voltages. This has got to be 5 volts DC. Yep, that's accurate. Nothing to do with the switch. We're going to change this inductance level. Let's go 10 Henrys. I want a big inductance value because I want you to see the time it's going to take to kind of slowly ramp up this inductance. And then, um, you know, let's drop this down. We're going to put it at 500 ohms. So. Uh, half a kilo ohm. And that should be it. I'm going to take our simulation speed 
down a tick or two. Now, I want you to think about it before I click the button. Knowing what we know about inductance and inductors, where do you think the voltage, excuse me, the current is going to go? Because unlike caps like capacitors, which are meant to slowly ramp up and ramp down voltage, we're talking about current. That's the power of inductors. So I'm going to click the button. You got it in your mind. Let's see if your hypothesis is correct. Here we go. You can see that the current is slowly, very slowly going through the inductor. And it was already moving at a pretty quick pace through the resistor. But the magnetic fields, these elect electromagnetic fields are, are slowly getting more robust. They're getting bigger. They're getting bigger. And what's happening is now the wire is offering less resistance. I shouldn't say it's offering less resistance. The resistance isn't really changing. It's the electromotive force pushing against acting as resistance is lessening because it's slowly getting to a more equalized state, a more constant state. And now you can see that the inductor is actually flowing far more amperage, far more quantity of electrons than the resistor is almost the exact inverse and as this offers the least the path of least resistance because the wire starts to become nominal right almost resistance less yeah then now there's far fewer electrons going through the resistor it's pretty crazy, right? I mean, I think you guys should sit for a second and appreciate what's going on here. And imagine like these invisible fields of electromagnetic energy, which are slowly growing and oscillating around this wire and merging and becoming containers for more energy to the point where they're actually starting to draw current and push them out the back end as fast as possible. That was a lot of movement for talking about an electrical component, but it's kind of jazzy. I think it's cool stuff. So um, I want you guys to play around in the Falsted uh, simulator and mess around with changing the, indu the inductance values. Let's go higher or lower Henry's and then um, changing the resistance levels and seeing how that works out for you. And um, also don't forget to put the scopes on so you can visualize the ramp up and ramp down. And then let's open the switch and see what happens. Look at that. That's crazy. Look, the inductor is actually forcing the current through the resistor as if it were a voltage source. All that energy that's been trapped in the electromagnetic, field, electromagnetic fields, those mag fields, were getting pushed through. And now we're stopped. Crazy stuff. All right, I hope you like that one. I don't think there's another slide on that. I will hit you back with part two pretty soon here. All right. Hope you guys have a good one. I will talk to you later. Bye.